the world might feel a bit more chaotic and a bit more divided. It's easy to forget sometimes that there are constants. Your home's still your home, your family's still your family, and all the structures of our society are still there to look after you if you need it. Here we go. George's resource. Adult male, code red trauma, 10 minutes. Activate the helipad. There's been an explosion on a building site. Heart rate 200. Open your eyes, open your eyes. Imagine having to work here. Hello, Amy, can I help? St George's, London. It's all going to kick off now. One of Britain's busiest A&E departments. Are we ready to roll? We'll carry on CPI. Oh, goodness me, it's all happening, isn't it? We need to fix that or you won't survive. Is it? Uh... A place where life... <laughs> Would you say I was fit, Doctor? Honestly, I think I'm quite fit. Love. You are my everything. I love you and it's OK. And loss. Oh, Mum. I'm so sorry. Unfold every single day. For every bad thing that you see, there is something equally wonderful out there. Filmed during the summer of 2019, these are the stories of a nation and its health service. I thought I was going to die. You're definitely not going to die. You've got too many good doctors and nurses here. When people experience really significant illness or injuries, we see people pull together, we see relationships get stronger, and we see people reflect on what really is the most important things in their life. Whatever happens, it's going to be OK. I love you. Love you too. Great. We'll see you in ten. Thanks, mate. Oh, Jesus. I'm here. Hems, land, drunk, tubed, head injury. Yeah, fine. We're in South London. It's a Friday, Saturday night. Payday's a popular one. And, you know, people go out and have a good time. Uh, Adult, female, trauma, 10 minutes. But then you do have that group of patients, such as the elderly, they need care. It doesn't matter what time of the week it is. And sometimes the department is nearly completely full. Two is poorly, um, three is a new stroke, four, it needs a CT still, it's yeah, well, I, 50, um, this lady's quite poorly, very poorly. And then by the end, you get quite blasé and the phone goes off again and you think, oh, here comes another one. St George's. Yeah, it, they could do with changing the ringtone, I think. George's ED. <laughs> yeah. 15 minutes and your C cams, yeah. Thank you, bye. Adult male trauma call, 15 minutes. A 50 year old man is being rushed to St George's after he lost control of his motorbike at high speed. RTC motorcyclist. Hi, it's Liz and Misas. I need space, please. Consultant Mark is leading the trauma team. When you're thrown from the bike, you have that kinetic energy. And then when you hit the ground, that kinetic energy is all transferred into the body. We commonly see injuries to the back, and that can cause either temporary or permanent damage and the very worst outcome would be uh, paralysis. The man's wife is on her way to St George's. It was lovely weather, so we decided to have a barbecue. I said, I'll prepare everything. I invite a few people over. And he was going for a quick ride with his friend. Can you hold 15 for me? Thank you. Right. And then I got a phone call. His friend said, hi, I just wanted to tell you that Graham had a little wobble on his bike. You can't speak to Graham because paramedics are with him. Everything stopped for me. That was just the longest and the worst part of my life, just not knowing what's happening.
one, three. One, two, three. Thank you. Okay, this is Graham. Graham's a 50-year-old gentleman. He's today, approximately 1,700 hours, he's just left the crossroads traffic lights, built up to a speed of about 50, and describes a tank to slap incident where you lose control of the handlebars. Full impact witnessed by his friend, which was a curve. That in turn on impact threw him three to four foot into the roadside. He's got pain between his shoulder blades at the back, but he does have a back injury. He has got bilateral hand pain. This is swollen, query fracture. He's got swollen left thumb, query fracture. Right. Hello, Graham. Hello. Hello, my name's Mark. I'm one of the doctors here. Would you mind just giving us a hand getting him off the scoop? Is that all right? Thank you. Graham, I'm just going to check you from top to toe, OK? It's just a bit tight in the chest. Right? There, was it? Yep. OK. All right. He's a major trauma, mainly because of the mechanism. We will get around to the scanner as quickly as we can, because often there's a lot of there's a high chance of kind of occult injuries like fractures or something like that. Breath in and out. We do see some patients who have serious injuries to the larger bones in their in their spine, and they're at risk of of nerve damage. Graham, so. Um... We're going to get you around for a scan. Sure. OK, we're going to do a CT scan of your head, your neck, and all the way down to your tummy. The things come to your head is just what if he's going to end up in a wheelchair? He's just part of our life. Now, ready, steady, 50-year-old Graham is having an urgent CT scan to see if he has any internal injuries after losing control of his motorbike at high speed. Let's keep nice and still. The first time I've met Graham, I had been single for six months. I just end my relationship and I thought, this is my time. I'm going to enjoy myself as a single woman. I wasn't ready for a relationship. I wasn't looking for it. I went to the bar with my friend and he was there with his friends. Very small bar in Sutton, very crowded, lots of people. Playing house music, which is Graham's favorite, not mine. Breathe in and hold your breath. I was 27 when I met him. He was 41 and he didn't look it at all. So I asked him to show his ID to me to prove that he's 41. And we just started to chat. We were talking about uh, British beaches that I was so upset about pebbles on the beach and I really wanted to see Sandy Beach. One day at work, I receive a parcel. I've opened it and that was a bucket and spade and a cart from Graham. And even though I thought it was quite cheesy, but it just melted my heart. And then I texted him, so he got my number. And, and then he took me to Cambersons, which I loved. We were playing football on the beach. I think I could feel the vibes. Hello there. My name's Olivia. How are you? Uh, <laughs> better days. You've had better days. Um, which hand is the sore hand? The hand? Oh, both, actually. Both, yes. lovely. So apart from a trip to A&E, what were your plans for the weekend? <laughs> well, I'm actually supposed to be going on holiday on Tuesday. Lovely. Where to? Uh, to Turkey. <gasps> nice. So hopefully I'm still going, but we'll just see. Yeah, once we get the results of your scans, we'll know what we're doing. I've been cheated on before, and I've been treated badly physically as well. So I had few very toxic relationships, and that created the thought in my head that I'm not good enough. And it made me really insecure. 
that's why it created that thing in my head that I don't want to get married. My sister knows her NHS number off by heart. Why? I don't know why, she just does. But I don't even know what blood group I am. Norman, please. Sorry. Follow me this way. Turn left. There's the first door on the right. Yeah, perfect. OK, take a seat. My name is uh, Maria, one of the nurse practitioners here. How can I help you today? I tripped on the paving stone. All right, when was this? Two days ago. All right, OK. I thought it would go away, obviously, you know, but yeah. it hasn't. OK. Did you actually fall onto the ground? I fell backwards, actually. Oh, did you really? Oh, I dear. Oh, I couldn't goodness. understand. No, OK. I, I fell backwards. I usually go forwards. OK. I, I don't believe in going to the doctors or hospitals straight away. I believe there is a period where you leave it and hope that it will go away. And uh, But on this occasion, it didn't. What happened after that? Did you get up unaided or you, you were helped up? No, I got up unaided. Unaided, yeah. OK. And then you, did, you feel, did you feel dizzy or a headache or anything? Dizzy. Dizzy, OK. And then what's then you... you I, I just went home. OK, so that was um, two days ago? Two days ago, yeah. I was born in Belfast. I come from a very large family in which I had 11 brothers and one sister. Unfortunately, television wasn't known at that time. I'm afraid uh, upstairs was the name of the game those days. <laughs> when mum was expecting the baby, we'd all be sitting downstairs, and all of a sudden we'd hear the yelling of a baby, and would say, that's another one. Any medicines you take regularly every day? Well, you've got your list. Oh, well done. You've come prepared. I'm a diabetic. Oh, are you? OK, fine. My father was very strict. He's got 11 boys in the house. He would say, if any of you get in trouble or the police come to my door, my boot will go so far up your bottoms that it will be very difficult to come down. Needless to say, under the threat of that, none of us got into any trouble. OK, right. Let's look at your foot then. So, any pain along here? No. Starts there. Whoop, there's a wall. There, okay, and, a, yeah. and across. And across, OK. And right. underneath. OK, and along here as well? Yes. OK, right. OK, let me just, can you move your toes? I can't. No, because it's, 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 it's so swollen. I can't. So I think this needs an X-ray. Foot down now, rest it. And um, what about alcohol? Don't drink. You don't drink, OK, well done. Now, the last time a doctor asked me that question here, he laughed because he couldn't understand an, an Irishman doesn't drink. I've got 12 brothers yeah. and 11 never trusted. Really? As sure as Did I'm your sick. parents drink then? My okay. father was a drunkard and he pulled us off. My father did like a good drink and was drunk a lot of the times. Pints of Guinness with a tot of whiskey every time. Like Jekyll and Hyde, when he didn't have drink on him, he was absolutely first class. But drink seemed to transform him into something that, that he wasn't, especially when he bullied mother. Have you taken any pain relief for it? Paracetamol. Uh, has that helped at all or not at all? No. Not at all. I was 18 years of age and there's a shop at the end of our street and I walked past it one day and this girl was standing in the shop doorway and I looked at her and she looked at me, and they both really smiled at one another. And that was it. I knew that's a moment for me. So the next day, 
Her mother was standing in the shop doorway. I said, well, I'd like to take your daughter out. OK, so basically, it's through that door at the end, and then when you've had the X-ray, come back here. Thank you. OK, I'll see you shortly. Yes. Now, the problems arise because uh, I'm a Protestant, and, of course, her mother was a staunch Roman Catholic, so she said to me, uh, well, I'll ask her. I think I know what the answer's going to be, but, of course, the answer wasn't what she expected. The answer was yes. Hello, sir. Hello there. How are you doing? All right. Have you broken your limb? Right. Have you ever broken your limb? No, 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 I know. I still will get blasted. Hello, Hello there. I'm part of I'm one of the doctors working here. Oh, nice to meet you, nice doctor. Thank you. Um, so you just started feeling some palpitations earlier today? Yes. Or? I woke up this morning about 10 to 5 and you could feel like a slight fluttering in the chest and the heart palpitations started. And it's frustrating. Funny enough, I'm sorry to keep cutting you off. That's OK. I remember when I was at the salon last week and I was feeling a bit sweaty and sick that day. Okay. So this is not dangerous. Yeah. Whereas if you have a thing called atrial fibrillation, that can be a bit... Yeah, exactly. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, you are. We don't think you have atrial fibrillation at the moment, no. Would you say I was fit, Doctor? I would, if you're so... If you're well, so honestly, I think I'm then. quite fit. St George's emergency. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, it's JW. Okay, thanks. Bye. Adult medical priority ET. Four minutes. A 76-year-old woman is being brought to St George's after having a fall at home. With elderly people falling, which unfortunately is quite a common thing. They've been on the floor for some length of time and developed a pressure sore or developed hypothermia or all of those conditions could potentially be life-threatening to the patient. Hello. Hello. How are you? Do you? I think I recognise you too, darling. Can I just take this and I'll book her in for you? I'm just going to lie you a bit flat for a minute, OK? Not for long. Uh, so this is Joyce. Uh, Hi, Joyce. 76. Mm -hmm. um, she's had two falls in the last two days, um, which she lost consciousness with. She felt dizzy and passed out. Um, today was about 7 or 8 this morning, um, and she was still on the floor when we got there. Um, she's got central back pain, but, um, but she was very short of breath. I've been given nebs and nothing else so far. Well, just IV hydrocortisone. Oh, we get probably asthma, but we don't really know. Joyce, do you mind if I listen again whilst yeah, they're yeah. attaching all those things? That's all right. Yeah, definitely quite wheezy. Yeah. We'll give you some more nebulizers and probably some antibiotics. As we enter into the elderly phase of life, there's often sort of multiple different things that are contributing factors to that patient's condition. Can you manage, darling? That's right. Do you want me to do it for you? You're going to do it? When one thing goes wrong, it's almost like a domino effect where lots of things are then knocked off. So, darling, we're going to put the mask back on and open up your chest a bit and get this breathing a wee bit more under control. And who sorts out your leg ulcers? Does the district nurse come in? GP. You go in to the GP. Are you always this sugly? Eh? Are you always this shaky? No. Not usually, but then it's because, yeah, a big event in my day. And there's so many people around me, so I don't see anybody all the way. Oh, bless you. You know, so. They might just be at home alone without the right support, and so they're more vulnerable, they're more at risk. Someone here to do an X-ray for you as well. I think we need to have a look at these we as will. Thank you.
very much. You can rest your arm now. Yeah. Oh, she's coming in. Grant, that's your wife. She's coming in. Cool. Doctors are waiting for the results of Graham's CT scan to determine if his high-speed motorbike crash has caused any significant injuries. Hi, baby. Hi, honey. You're right. Oh, sweet. Mm, don't cry, darling. I'm right. Just, just precautions, you know. I'm fine. Hello. Are you wife? Yeah. Hello. My name's Olivia. I'm one of the nurses. Um, so he's just had some scans. So we're just going to wait for the results of those. We think something's definitely broken here. His hand is quite, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wrist and thumb, perhaps, on my left hand. Yeah, so, uh... All right. Are you... Yeah, you don't uh, look right, honey. Yeah, I'm a bit beaten up, but, yeah. I don't know if I can touch you. Can I touch you? Your nose. Your nose is a bit... That's where crash on it, basically. After three months of seeing each other, we had this very serious conversation that we're falling for each other. And I said the only condition is that we stay together, but I want to have children. Graham said yes. And I came off my pills, and two weeks later I was pregnant. Are you in pain? I did a lot of that. Don't do it again. I think my hands are broken. I think my head is broken. Millie was born when I was 30, when he held her for the first time. I think it hit him there because he just burst into tears. He made him really happy. The first week was very amazing. We started to bond with my daughter and realising that, yeah, we're together forever. Gradually, I started to become scared that I need to check if she's breathing. I started to be worried that I might squash her if she was too close to me. Everything started to be very anxious. Maybe her blanket was too high, maybe she's too hot. And that's where it started. Get better for me, baby, OK? Yeah. Got a holiday to go on. <laughs> I hope you will. I didn't realise I should have asked for help at that stage, so I left it alone and everything escalated. I was almost paranoid that someone is there to hurt us, especially our little daughter. I ended up checking if there is someone lying under our beds or if someone is under our floorboards in the kitchen. Any noise was making me almost paralysed. I couldn't sleep, I was always tired. I didn't want to leave the house because I thought there was more danger outside. It was a horrible time. Hiya. Just want to find out if you're keeping him overnight. Or... So I probably say yes. OK. I can't be sure 100% because we're still waiting for the scan results. OK. Yeah, and for someone to review them. And obviously, because they're not sure if he lost any consciousness at the scene, we need to make sure that his head is OK and right. that he's, you know, he's OK to go home. Um, but he will be seen by one of the ortho doctors as well. Yeah. So uh, once I know, I'll let you know. All right. Brilliant. OK. But it's just okay. obviously the broken bones that we need so to... So there's a chance for him, Sian. <laughs> oh, there is. Your face right. is still beautiful, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Graham was definitely worried because first, that's a new situation because we've got a child at home and a second situation, his wife is not coping. I never wanted to see you like this. It's not sexy at all. <laughs> I love you so much, baby. I 
don't really know what was going through my head. I, I bonded with my daughter. I loved her and, and I don't know why I had thoughts like this. He can pop your bag just on yeah. the table. Norman has been sent for an X-ray of his foot after he tripped and fell on a paving stone. Pop your foot flat down on the board. Fantastic. Right, so try to stay nice and still there. Mary was very happy with me, and I was very happy with her, and we decided that uh, after about three months, well, we're going to get married. So for this next one, Norman, if you lift your foot, we'll pop this board under again, same position, and we'll just move you back a tiny bit. At the age of 18, I joined the Irish Guards and came over to Catrum for the training. Training was very tough, very hard. The worst part of it was the discipline. Nowadays, you'd call it over the top, but then it was expected to be like that. Discipline was very hard. All right, Norman, all finished. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take care. Uh, Have a good day. You too. My wife came over, and then we got an army flat. I usually am in for 8 o'clock in the morning. I bring her up with the usual cup of tea and digestive biscuit. And this morning, she said, I can't move. I, I thought she was having me on, quite honest with you. I said, no, don't be silly, come on. But she couldn't move, couldn't get out of bed. My wife, unfortunately, had rheumatoid arthritis. She couldn't walk very well. Her hands are folded up, and she needed my help. Help which I couldn't give her if I remained in the army. It wasn't my fault, I was trying to be kind. She was actually had her bum in the air, she was laying in the dirt. I thought she passed out, so I said, come on, let's get you up. And she went, whoa, and she went, pushed me right over. And when I hit the grass, I knew what I'd done straight away, because the blood just went. I've never seen so much blood in all my life, never. I've tried to be a good Samaritan. Now yeah, well, I won't be doing that again, tell you that. So you didn't feel dizzy before you collapsed at all? No. No, you just went, no warning whatsoever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just fell on the floor to be heat. <laughs> okay. And, but you blacked out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 76 year old Joyce is in recess with breathing difficulties after collapsing at home. Doctors are trying to determine if she has an infection or any other underlying medical conditions. How long have you been feeling unwell? Before today. Before today, yeah. yeah. About, about or so. A month? Yeah. Oh, OK, so a whole month. It's time, it's, it's got a little bit worse. OK. Yeah. Are you, are you in pain at the minute, sweetheart? Yeah. No, OK. So, yeah, so let's do this other nebulizer. Why don't you have a bit more on your tea? Your tea then I'll OK. Well. okay. Sadly, the elderly patients are notorious for not wanting to bother people and not wanting to complain and they might just battle with an underlying problem for for months or even years just mind you don't spill that lovely yeah. and it could be months since somebody's done something as simple as make them a cup of tea and just sit there and take five minutes to ask them how they're feeling about everything and what's going on and just show a little bit of kindness towards them. Have you had a bit of a rough time? Yeah. 
a few falls over the last few days. Yeah. I've had several of those. Yeah. Since my husband died. Oh, oh sweetheart, I'm because sorry. Idea. When did your husband die? It was November last year. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. That must have been really hard. It's been a hard day, it? Yeah. Was that in here? Yeah. What, in recess or in a hospital, uh, one of the wards? Oh, it was. OK. Oh, darling. It's just for it. I know, it's but it's hard. And then when yeah, you're not it's well as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm really After sorry to hear that. After 33 years, I've buried it for a little while. How long? 33? Yeah. Sorry, breathe deep breath, deep breath. Yeah. Oh, darling. And was it a sudden, was it a sudden thing? No, you've been ill for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you've had a really rough six months yeah. then. There was often cases where patients would come in and they'd say, oh, my husband died in that bay across there last year and you just think yeah that must be horrendous for you to come back and relive this you're probably going to stay in hospital with us okay yeah. and i think we'll get we need to get you back on your feet properly yeah. and we need to make sure that you've got enough support at home when you do go home yeah okay they mentioned that your legs are always quite red like yeah. that is that is that yeah, true are they any worse than normal at the moment or are they always yeah, that like that good. Yeah. So they are definitely worse than a couple of weeks yeah. ago, you think? Yeah, probably, yeah. OK. Yeah. And it was last changed at the GP on Friday, the, yeah. the bandages? Yeah. OK. Nurses will clean and dress Joyce's leg ulcers whilst she's given a nebulizer to help manage her breathing. My grandmother was a huge influence in my life. We used to bake, we used to make dresses together, and she was very, very patient. She was a role model because she was incredibly kind of caring and loving and encouraging. And I think I'll strive to be like that. <laughs> oh, look, Trev's done your leg. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice, I am there. Shall we sit you up a bit? Yeah. She was always going out to the theatre and doing lots of fun things with her friends and going on holidays and going on cruises. And then sadly, she had a stroke. She became very um, weak and poorly very quickly. She just withdrew, like lots of old people do. They withdraw from life because it's, it's, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you lose that independence. She made the decision that this wasn't the life she wanted. And unfortunately, she passed away. I'm off them all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Right. So, on the screen here, I have your foot. They all look, all the joint lines are, are fine. A bit of osteoarthritis apparent, but the bones don't appear to be broken at all. We marry for better or for worse, and my wife deserved all the help and assistance that I could give her. They all look to be intact. There's, you know, there's no break or no fracture. It looks fine. Okay. But there's nothing obvious on that that I can see. Right. Quite a few people had left the army to join the police, so I made the usual application, done the usual test, and was accepted. It was a good force who looked after its staff. My wife went into hospital for 12 weeks, and they granted me 12 weeks leave. That wouldn't have happened in the army. I was in uniform for the first two years, and uh, I decided to apply for uh, the criminal investigation department. 
Obviously, you're retired. Yeah. What are you retired from? Police. Are you really? Yeah. City of London. Oh, so they're a special police force, aren't they? They have to be a lot taller. Uh, it used to be. Used to be yes, so, yeah. Not anymore? No. Oh. No. In our 30s, we decided to have children. We had two lovely girls. But Mary's health, it, 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 it deteriorated. She could no longer get up the stairs. She couldn't cook. She couldn't wash. So literally, we had to do everything for her. Keep your foot up. Right. Will be helpful. Apply ice therapy, so you can put a bag of frozen peas through a towel, on a towel, and then onto your foot. So not directly onto your foot. For about five or 10 minutes every hour, and that should help bring the swelling down. I mean, it's only been That's two right. days, hasn't it? That's right. So basically, it might take a bit longer to heal. Yeah. And, and then, you know, the, I mean, I don't want you to sit at home and do nothing, but I want you to, you know, to pot around. Oh, I yeah, will, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. But I don't want you to do a marathon either. Oh, no, no chance. Mm, yeah. Yeah. One Sunday afternoon, my daughter Annette, she, I went up to see her mum. She was lying down in bed. And she said, get up quick. She's having breathing difficulties. So I managed to get her down the stairs. Didn't wait for an ambulance, got her into my car. So anyway, I wheeled her in the accident emergency and the woman took her straight into recess. She was in hospital and I was sent for on the Tuesday morning. She went in on a Sunday. She just, they came and said she'd arrested and they couldn't resuscitate her. And that was it, unfortunately. You live alone or with other people? No, I live with my daughter. Okay. My wife passed away in here, actually. Oh, okay. A while ago or? Seven years ago. Oh, OK. Very sad and very painful when you've lived with a woman for 56 years and then no longer there. Now you know, sort of subconsciously, that there's no break. No, right. that, well, that's, yeah, I'm happy yeah, with that. that. That's right, exactly. And you're more likely to, OK. OK. okay. Yeah. Much happy. obliged. OK, take Thank care. You. Bye. She meant everything to me. She was terrific wife, terrific mother. They were 56 very, very happy years. I couldn't have asked for any better. Hello, Joyce. Hi. I'm one of the doctors working in medicine. Oh. Who do you live with now? Nobody. Sorry? Nobody. Nobody. So you live by yourself? So you've been smoking since 15 years? Yes. Yeah. And how many did you smoke a day? Oh, quite a few at first. OK. Um, but I cut them right there now because my husband was in here. Mm. And I was so upset. Mm. I had to have something. OK. Joyce's nephew, Roy, has arrived in Rhesus. Hello. I'm one of the doctors from medicine. Yep. And I was just telling Joyce, who's been very, very good, that she's coming in under us. Yep. And I would estimate an admission time of about at least a couple of days. OK. Because she's got a good going infection. Her infection markers are really high, as are her white cells which fight infections. And we're going to give her antibiotics and fluids and I'm going to see how she does. At the moment, our main aim is to make sure she breathes better yep. and her heart rate settles. Yeah. All right, OK. Thank you very much. OK. When you get home, mm. I haven't cleaned up, so I'll get your hoover out and I'll suck up. What are you doing with a shredding bin? Me and I had an accident yesterday. But I lost to be temper with it. Why? I don't move out of the way when I wanted it to. <laughs> I'll sort it out when we get in. As humans, we need basic human interaction on a daily basis. And just because you get to a certain age doesn't mean that you suddenly start to not need that anymore. If anything, you need it more. Yeah, I just found out. You've got, you've got a pulse. Have I? Don't sound so surprised. 
she was human after all. Yeah. We are in a society where there is a growing mental health problem, and I think it's very important that we remember that. It's not just a case of, though they just can't be bothered or they don't feel like getting out of bed that day, that depression is a real thing and it can exist in anybody, whether you're 90 years old or whether you're young. I don't want to leave, but I know I have to. It's fine, I'm fine. I'm fine. Go to sleep, OK? OK. Take care, baby. You're in a good hands, yeah? Love you. Bye. Thank you. Doctors now have the results of Graham's CT scan. Hello. I'm just going to take you out of the collar. Oh, OK. So, so your CT has been reported. Yeah. OK. And it looks like you've got fractures uh, at the back of your, in your spine. OK. Right. It's, you know, the number three and number four of your thoracic spine. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a reference to the neurosurgeons to figure out how they want that to be managed. OK. OK. After my daughter was born, I felt very alone, but at the same time, I didn't want to see anyone. I've been recommended to have counselling to find a the reason why labour triggered my problems. We'll do plaster and a thumb spike and then we'll get you going. I was straight away diagnosed with panic disorder just by hearing my symptoms. I was worried that I would be never enough to be a mum. But it didn't feel like this is it. So I went back to see my GP and I've been put on antidepressants. After three months, I was becoming calmer. Uh, I was able to put my daughter in her cot. I didn't have to have her beside me. Hello, you all right? How are you doing, sweetie? I've got um, two uh, cracked vertebrae in my spine. You fractured your spine? Yes. Um, oh. oh, baby. Therapy, medication, Graham's support helped me a lot and it made me be the good and happy mum. When I was happier, I've decided that it's time for another child, but it's going to be better this time. I'm going to be stronger. I thought every now and then that history might repeat itself, but I wanted to go through it. I think after I've realised what, what triggered my anxiety at the first place, I kind of knew how I can switch it off and just concentrate on my family. After my son was born, I thought, it's going to be good, it's going to be fine. My family makes me stronger, and this is the family I have chosen. So I'll do everything for, for us to be happy. The diagnosis was I had arthritis in my big toe and the rest of the foot was badly swollen. I am in very good health, considering my age. It did cross my mind that he wouldn't be able to walk, that he would be badly injured and same you wouldn't be able to work. I was trying to get rid of that thought from my head. I was just hoping that everything would be fine. I 
had to wear a neck brace for seven weeks, which was horrible. Um, thankfully, I didn't have to wear that at night. Pretty difficult, a lot of sitting around. Um, lots of hospital visits for my hands. Having the love and support of my family has got me through this period and it's made me realise that life's out there and to really enjoy it.